mind. Is it possible to be successful in business without niching down? Today, we're going to be talking to a successful entrepreneur about how he mastered being the jack of all trades. Welcome to the Dawn Jarvis show. Serial entrepreneur Dara Lucy is 27 years old, is from Ireland and has dipped his toes into a number of areas. He has been on the cusp of being a professional footballer. He has traveled the world with a backpack and he started a few businesses. He sold a couple and he's crashed some more. Welcome, Dara. It's lovely to see you. How are you today? Thanks, Don. Really, really good to, to be on. I, I don't know, am I going to be able to live up to the expectations you set there in that, <laughs> I think in that so. introduction? I uh, think so, but, definitely. Uh, happy to be here. Brilliant. Dara and I um, have both done a course on YouTube, um, Ali Abdul's part-time YouTuber course, and we met very recently, didn't we, at an in-person event um, in London. It was an absolute pleasure to meet him and hear all about him, so I'm really delighted that he's on the show. So the first question I usually ask people is how did you get from where you are or where you were to where you are today? Tell us your story, Dara. How long have you got, Don? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you yeah. can't be that long. <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, listen, thanks for having me on. Uh, my story, well, I, I suppose currently, like to the point at which I asked, and I suppose maybe with the title of this, uh, I've done quite a few things. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a bit of a blessing and a curse in, in the sense that sometimes it can be difficult to, to, to know when to keep on going with, with one thing or to, to, to move on and dip your toes in something else. So um, I suppose from, from the very start, I have a family, five, young, youngest of three, okay. youngest of yeah, three, two older brothers there. They're both quite uh, a fair bit older than me. So I, you could say I was... I was blessed to almost have four older parents to always ask advice and to get money from, which, yeah. was, uh, which was one of the biggest aspects. Uh, definitely quite type A personality. I kind of dive head first into more or less everything I do. Um, played football quite uh, seriously as a kid. It was, it, it was as I say, my life uh, until I was about 16, 17 years old. Um, and, you know, there was a stage where it was, you know, do I go over to the UK, which is a big step for a 16 year old Irish person and, and yeah. play and play professionally? Or do I, you know, do what I wanted to do, which was kind of stay in school and be my friends and not take life uh, too seriously at that point and went to college, took a year out after college, went traveling with my friends, uh, which was, you know, amazing and came back penniless, uh, very, very broke. Uh, and with uh, a shared ambition with my best friend to start a business, that was the mm -hmm. That was the ultimate goal, really. We did engineering in college. We worked in engineering for a little bit of time. We enjoyed it, but it, it wasn't really what, what we wanted to do. Uh, and so what we did is we, we set up uh, a startup, an Irish-based startup in the education space. Mm -hmm. That eventually led to, to setting up another business in the COVID pandemic when I saw a white space in the market. Um, subsequently ended up selling those two businesses uh, about a year ago uh, and as you alluded to in, in the title crash some more thereafter <laughs> uh, learning learning lots in the process uh, and up until this point right now I'm I'm working uh, I'm working full-time in a, in a really really great company and learning lots and uh, I'm also in the content creation space as you are yeah. trying to to figure out that nut uh -huh. which is uh, one of the hardest things I've ever done but right. also one of the funnest and one of the most fulfilling. So, yeah, that's uh, that's my life story up to this point. Brilliant. And you're you're living in Scotland at the moment, aren't you? You're over from Ireland at the moment. I am indeed. I'm in I'm in Edinburgh. Uh, I I followed a girl over here, my girlfriend, uh, lovely, lovely Laura. And counterintuitively, she's not from Scotland. She's from twenty miles from where I live, back in Cork in Ireland. So, uh, she got a job here after college. When COVID hit all my businesses moved online there was no reason for me to be here or be there anymore and uh came over here for three days and I stayed here for three months <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh it was probably at that stage where I was like I should probably stop mooching off Laura and her roommates and we should probably get our own place and uh move over here for good uh, so I did that about a year ago haven't looked back since 
Uh, brilliant. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you're here because I wouldn't have met you if you weren't here. And um, so that was that is an amazing story. And um, so I, I want to ask you about the the being on the cusp of being a professional footballer and I you know I've often wondered about this my son plays and um, semi-professional rugby and you do have to dedicate your life to it you have to be a professional athlete and it's it takes a lot of dedication and um, from parents and from the from the athlete themselves and you decided mm. against it and I'm mm. not sure and that must have been quite hard, you know, and I'm, and I'm sure your family were really supportive of you and what mm. you wanted to do. But was it hard? And do you regret it? And could you have been, you know, premier mm. fo footballer now and um, mm. you know, not the serial entrepreneur you are? You know, would it make any difference? Maybe, maybe it would. I do often think about what, what would have happened now. Like it's worth ca caveating as well. I didn't have offers from like Manchester United or Barcelona or anything like that. Like I was definitely not at that level at that age, but um, like it was an option. I have a few friends that, that, that are currently playing in the championship and Premier League right now at the moment. But I suppose at the time, I don't know how different it is for people over like living in the UK, but for Irish players, like it's almost um, a must to go over at 16 years of age before you form finish any form of yeah. education. Um, anybody that I know, which is a lot of people that actually did that, you know, and ended up coming home, uh, yeah. and they were a lot better than me. That's nothing to do with skill. It was it was it was all to do with the the age at which you're at to yes. to go over at a young age. Yeah. And I suppose, like, yes, I do think about what could have happened if I did do that. Mm -hmm. um but you know with what I had to decide with at the time uh definitely don't regret the decision like I I I, I was lucky in that I loved school as well mm -hmm. I had a great group of friends that I definitely was not ready to leave mm -hmm. and so at the time I I played it more or less all day every day for 12 years mm -hmm. like I, I li literally started playing under eights when I was four Mm -hmm. um and from that point on there was nothing but soccer and I kind of got a little bit tired of it yeah started feeling like a job probably a little bit too early yeah um and I wanted to start enjoying it again and mm -hmm. it took me a while to actually get back enjoying it yeah um but once I did I was I was quite content because there was other things going on as well that I wanted to 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 try out and look I'm talking like a man here who uh <laughs> who turned turned down a, a career who knows I might have gone over it mightn't have worked and do you know what Don it probably wouldn't have worked if I um, if I went over so I think some days I, think, I cry I cry myself to sleep knowing that I could have been earning 100 million a year but look <laughs> could be worse it could be worse well I think it's to me it sounds like the right decision if you were falling out of love with it it wouldn't have worked um because of the mm. the, the headspace you were in at that time mm. and, it's, and it's and it's all about it's all about timing and I think um and you now we'll come on to this you know about entrepreneurs and their whether what their personality type is and you said already quite you're quite driven Driven so that you know sometimes I think and I think this about my son whatever sport or at whatever he decides to take to take seriously he will do well because he's driven to do it so mm. you know it doesn't really matter what it is it could be sport it could be something else really so and I really I really believe that that um, 100 percent. and like your son like very lucky to have really good people around around you as well to, to help you make that decision my parents never forced me to do anything mm -hmm. um whereas like you know they they very much could have and that may have ended a lot differently so mm -hmm. it does make a big difference as well as to who's who's around you in that yeah, place especially cool. when you're 16 like yeah. very moldable yeah like it's uh yeah, yeah very fra fragile slash exciting time in the life yeah definitely and did you start your businesses with your friend um before you traveled to the world with a backpack or after uh no after after so we finished college we had plan because this brings me back to my uh my brothers like i i up until the age of 22 i copied everything they did yeah. <laughs> finished school yeah. went to college they went traveling after college i said you know this sounds cool and then after really looking into it it's like actually i really do want to do this Mm -hmm. and take a year out take it alone and just and just go and do it because I didn't I never felt like I was going to get a time in my life again where yeah. it's going to be so carefree wouldn't have any responsibilities so um the two of us set out alongside another friend who who joined us a little bit later for a smaller period of time 
and then um his girlfriend as well kate um so we went for for 10 months we budgeted our way around and it was definitely something that i'm really happy we did before we went into the big bad world yeah because it does get very all-consuming very very quickly yeah. and up until that point and maybe you know it's different for for some people but you're always geared towards doing something like you have you know you finish school once you finish school you do this and once you mm-hmm. finish that you do that and then once you get to the corporate ladder it's like then you're going to get this promotion this promotion it's very rare in your life that you're going to get an opportunity to actually stop and not have any agenda yes. and you'd be very very surprised what actually what you learn and like not sounding too like i don't know i hate the the bullshit of going away and finding yourself like yeah. kind of stigma around that and like yeah. there's a stigma there for a, a reason but there there actually is a lot of value in just sitting and doing nothing and just doing what you want to do because you learn an awful lot about yourself. Yeah, yeah. I didn't travel the world, but I did actually stop. Um, I, after I qualified as a nurse, I took I took a sabbatical and right. um, did a thing called Camp America in America and worked for a oh, charity brilliant. Um, in America. And it did it did change my life. And somebody told me before I went that it, it would change my life because you know I thought America is very familiar because we see it on the television a lot and you think you know it but you don't know it and the actual reality of being there um and um, I worked with children um from from poorer backgrounds and it was very humbling um to to do so and also um to know I I suppose that I had options and one of the options was coming back to Britain so you know to actually I had some choices that I could do so you know I was offered to stay and I decided I, I didn't want to which I was I didn't think if you'd asked me before I'd gone I'd, I'd say yeah I'll definitely stay um but I didn't mm-hmm. want to I came I came I came back and um you know and then you know and it does it does put things into perspective and you know how small your world can be and it does. Uh, there are other people out there doing all sorts of things on the other side of the world and you know I've been to Africa yeah. I've been to the Caribbean as well and yeah. that, you know, that has been very very humbling and um it makes me very grateful for lots and lots and lots of things as well. Yeah, we just wanted you back so badly. Then, <laughs> how, how, how it was. <laughs> Save the world. So you also so you so you started your businesses, and it must have been it wasn't that long ago, was it? Really, that you started these businesses, and they were so successful that you sold them. What was that like? I mean, to have the innovation to do it, to do it so successfully, then sell them and and move on. It's sort of like a bit a bit of a startup dream, really um yeah it is but I, there's a lot more than what meets the eye there yes, with the story sure like you know yeah we got to a point at which it was it was uh valuable enough for for somebody else to to think that they wanted it but like there was a lot of 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 effort and struggle and uncertainty and mm-hmm. uh very late nights working and mm-hmm. you know doing things especially when we first came out of college it was our first time in industry looking back you know I'm very glad that we were very naive we were naive enough to do that Mm -hmm. and because like there's a lot of luck involved in in Mm -hmm. doing something you think there's a problem in when you haven't experienced that industry before but uh, you know for us it was it it was very much of like you know let's do this we wanted to do it like we were at a point at which particularly with like myself and Nathan the guy I started the first business with where there was a dire problem there that like needed to be solved and and we we felt like we could solve it and we were lucky to be in the right place at the right time Mm -hmm. now you know at the time we sold it 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 was it was going well we had loads of people using what we had built um but you know before that it was two and a half years of you know throwing spaghetti at a wall and seeing if it stuck yeah, you know, like it was, it 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 was a bit of a slog. Um, the second time around was a bit different. It was very much like I kind of knew a little bit better what I was doing. Uh, it was actually started by accident, more or less. I started completely by accident, and it was it was done during COVID when people mm-hmm. were crying out for mm-hmm. for online tools, and mm-hmm. you know that was quite quick how that kind of like came up and mm-hmm. and I sold it. But it was um. It was a very interesting time. I feel like I, 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 I was lucky to learn more in those three years, and I feel like I would have learned in thirty years if I had gone and done something different. So, yeah. Is there something about startup that you like? And and do, I'm gonna I'm gonna say, and I mean I mean nothing by it. Do you get bored? And then so let's say you've done what you that you the bit you like, and then 
like so some people start a business and it's their business for life don't they you know until they mm. you know, decide to retire and um, mm. you've started and sold two businesses um mm. what's the bit mm. that you like and the what mm. is the bit you don't like yeah that's a really interesting point there you brought up about you know if like be, because they were you know i sold them relatively quickly it was it was almost like a, you know was it cause first or was it reason first like yeah. it was it, it was definitely reason first my first two businesses and re- reason first being you know i wanted to try and make a little bit of a name for myself like it was it, it was almost selfish in the way that like we kind of like set out to do um and i think like when you're well, i was 22 when i when i when i first went out and um, you know coming back broke after a year away it's nice to have a little bit of money in the pocket for the first time ever um and with that you know it was it, it was all about like what motivates you to do it in the first place yeah. for me at the time i wanted to do my own thing yeah. i was you know i tended to be someone that that wanted to do something a little bit different to to other people even though now like loads of people are going out and starting their own things which is which is fantastic and loads of people were actually back then at the time as well so it wasn't that different yeah. but I, I i suppose like the main thing that i that i wanted was was kind of freedom to do what i what I uh, what I wanted and like and still and still want to and you know like there's a lot of things that play into that money time mm-hmm. control power um but you know with that I think you know with the next thing that I end up starting or like whatever and whenever that would be um I think I'd like it to be more for a cause as opposed to a reason mm-hmm. if that makes sense Absolutely. if you can get both great but yeah um I think the the cause-based businesses generally are the ones that that provide people with uh with the most fulfillment yeah i i i I would agree and and um sort of coming from the public sector the health sector and uh, and and starting a business there's there's this sort of like you know i i would say that um my career in the nhs was all about you know service and 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 it wasn't transactional no no money was changed changing hands however um and now um I'm in a business that's the point isn't it really some money's changing hands and I think that there's some differences in that so I, I don't I, I actually believe that um there's service that 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 needs to be paid for expertise that needs to be paid for and 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 it's and it's worth it however and I think if behind that that you're wanting to do do what do well for people for communities that's what keeps me okay because before mm. I left the NHS I said well, I don't want to I don't want to work for a private company I don't want to make money for other people I'm not happy to make money for myself obviously but mm. you know there has to, it, it makes me feel better and you know I probably could write a thesis about that um <laughs> what that's about um if I'm sort of like working for a cause or something about you know around healthcare or something around that that, that that's helping people in communities mm. Now you said that you crashed a couple of businesses. Mm. Talk me through that and how was it? Did yeah, the story. It? Were you? Did you manage it? Did it make you depressed? Or were you all right? Or were you just like, okay? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. You learn much, much more by crashing a business than you do succeeding uh-huh. in one. Um, yeah, I mean, after so, like, I kind of got to a point where you know I was finished with the two businesses, and I was at a point where there was an opportunity there to to do it again basically mm-hmm. but like try and do it on a bit of a bigger scale mm-hmm. um now there were like a couple of side projects around this that i tried to fail too but like they're not even worth talking about it's the there, there there was one that that we put a lot of effort and a lot of resources into and i kind of banked on it mm-hmm. really as my like this is my ticket to mm-hmm. you know fair enough like you know you you can do what i did and like be okay for a while but like the goal of this was to do this and be okay for the, the rest of your life that was the yeah. idea uh-huh. idea behind this um and it was and it like it worked to a certain extent but it didn't work enough for us to to really go for it basically mm-hmm. like it was um it was fun but you know there was a point at which like we were like, especially the guy I was doing it with he was very mature he'd been in the game a lot longer than me he was very mm-hmm. good at saying you know this is the the facts here the facts don't look too good for us it's you know cut our ties here before we we lose more than we can afford Mm-hmm. And, and with that we take our lessons and we kind of move on from there mm-hmm. so um was I depressed after it not at all to be honest actually I was actually I felt more empty in the time before that when I didn't have anything to do mm-hmm. um the the 
the whole difference be, between, you know, I thought that once the businesses were, were gone, I, I, I was going to be like, you know, I level up in terms of like how happy I was and how mm-hmm. like productive I was and, yeah. and all that. And that, that maybe lasted for a week thereafter, you know, when there wasn't much of a purpose to what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, if like, if it doesn't feel good when no. you don't have a purpose. Now, mm-hmm. like for some people, it, you know, it might be great, but, but for me, like, I'm I'm happiest when I'm pouring all of my um, energy into yeah. something that I feel like is is adding value to to other people or to myself. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that's um that's one of the things that I definitely learned. So uh, ever since the word retire doesn't really uh, appeal to me. Yeah. I <laughs> so hate I yeah, hate yeah, yeah. Now What's there that? is a difference between <laughs> 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 there is a difference be- between you know retiring from something you don't like versus you know not retiring yeah. off things that that you like doing and that you can sustainably do for a long period of time it's all mm-hmm. about like you know, Val Ravikant talks about it a lot he's mm-hmm. you know I you know big fan lucky to, to have found him last year and just consumed every single word that he's ever spoken or written mm-hmm. um at that stage but he talks about uh, infinite and uh, finite games Mm-hmm. So, like, in the sense that, like, if you want to play a finite game, it's, it's games where you're constantly playing to win. Yeah. And it, they they tend to be zero-sum games in the yeah. sense that, like, for you, for you to win, somebody has to lose. Yeah. Whereas, like, if you look at playing infinite games, you can add to, to other players who are playing the infinite games, and you can both win. And it's, you know, continuing, so it will never end. And, you know, yeah, it's, I like, like that. it's That's the purpose side of things that's... Uh, definitely uh, a nicer way in my opinion for myself to look at so definitely and I was just um and just one last word about those businesses and um mm. do you think the age of your partner and the age of yourself um you know you talked about you know your partner saying oh let's walk away now if you if you'd if you'd been younger and not had his advice do you think that makes a difference and the reason I say that um, I read something Mm. today about um the age of um startups the people when they start their startup you people think that it's young people but there's a lot of older people people like me Mm. and um (laughs) you know the average age is 35 which is considerably younger than me but you know (laughs) that um you know so but the, the age is going up um so do you think that makes a difference when you're thinking about the viability of a, of a business because there is in my in my view there's a thing where you think oh should I cut my losses or do mm-hmm. I need to hold my nerve and mm-hmm. you know and then there's lots of things you balance up with with that and do you think age gives you an advantage or is it better to be young and to go for it I don't think there's a blanket answer to this. I no. think it depends. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I would love to say that age doesn't matter, but it does. Like, mm-hmm. like it's 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 factual that when you're younger, you don't know as much. You're a little bit more naive, and you may go for things that you wouldn't go for when you're older. Mm-hmm. But that being said, when you're older, you may know things that might help you save a year of mm-hmm. figuring this out when you're younger. So there's definitely pros and cons of both. Like mm-hmm. I've experienced both to a certain extent. Where first business I started was with my best friend, who's the same age as me, mm-hmm. and maybe if you know, he was at a different stage to what I was, we may have given up a lot sooner mm-hmm. and we may not mm-hmm. have kind of reached the, I wouldn't even call it a hockey stick growth, but like some mm-hmm. bit of growth that kind of got us to a point at which we were getting noticed. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, like when you're a little bit older, you do have that kind of element of, you know, experience that, that, mm-hmm. that you can't really buy. And plus like there's aspects too, where when you're older, like I'm advising a few businesses right now at the moment. And like, you know, they're in their kind of later stages in life. They have a family, they have a mortgage, mm-hmm. they have responsibilities that younger people don't have. Mm-hmm. So they do have to look at things a little bit more realistically mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. If yeah. they're not like young people, like we came back from a year of traveling, uh, living on nothing. It was very easy for us to go for two years without a salary, yeah. living at home. We were very lucky to have that. Uh, we, you know, we're living on pittance and it was just what we were used to. If you ask me to do that right now, mm-hmm. I don't have a mortgage. I don't have kids. I would still probably be very, <laughs> very reluctant to do that. Yeah. Never mind somebody that had, you know, all of these much, much bigger responsibilities than I do. Mm-hmm. So there is definitely a difference. And I think, you know, if you're going out to start a business with somebody, which I think you should do, because I've mm-hmm. done both and it's much mm-hmm. easier to do it with somebody yeah. like, like you're like there 
when you're um especially if you're doing like a like a tech business like because mm -hmm. like a lot of up, ups and downs and cash flow issues but it's very important that you really understand why you're both doing this because yeah. if if i want to build something to sell it but you know my business partner wants to build it as you know a lifestyle business for the rest yeah. of his life they're two very different things and you're yeah. going to end up clashing and you'll probably end up falling out yeah. and that's kind of one of the things that you really do have to be sure of that you're both getting in there for the right reason and number two that you have the complementing skill sets mm -hmm. to do it because if you're both the same like if 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 me and my twin which i don't have but when mm -hmm. went out to yes. start a business and we were very similar we end up clashing yeah. on on yeah. on everything yeah. so yeah like it's 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 probably the most important decision you will ever make when you're to starting a business is the first you started with yeah, I agree. I agree. And I also agree. It's um, having been on my own and in business for the last 18 months, I'm now thinking about what partnerships I can make and what joint yeah. positions I can make and those complementary skill sets that add, you know, add to the sum. Um, mm -hmm. um, I'm sort of seeing it in, in that way and the, and the best way to sort of scale up as well. Mm -hmm. So you have talked about not getting too comfortable and redefining yourself is fun and we've been talking about that haven't we yeah and, um, do you think it's um because we were talking about entrepreneurship before we actually started recording and whether you call yourself an entrepreneur or you don't and um and uh, we we talked so i mentioned at the beginning about you know your, your advice to niche down and i really struggle with that and um, I really like what you're saying about redefining yourself is fun. So tell me a bit more about that. Yeah. Um, so just on the, the niche and down piece before I, before I forget in like anything that you want to do, I think it's it, it's important to be open in general, mm -hmm. but with specific things that you do, it's important to, to niche down in those aspects. Let's say if you're starting a business, mm -hmm. like you can start loads of businesses, but within the businesses, you should niche down within those businesses. Yeah. So like there is a difference between you know where you niche down. Um, I suppose where where we were talking about was you know you and were asking me like what should should you call me beforehand? Yeah. And I don't know does anybody else ever feel this, but I I hate when people ask me that question because I I, <laughs> I I have no I have no idea what I am. Like if you asked me ten years ago, I would have said I was I was going to be a professional soccer player. If you asked me five years ago, I told you that I was going to travel for the rest of my life and become a digital nomad. You yeah. know like there's there like especially when you're like younger like you you can literally change your career five times in 10 years mm -hmm. and who says that career should be the thing that should define you in the first place yeah like tim ferris is it tim ferris talks a lot about you know people ask him like what does he do and he says oh well you know i love going for walks and i love traveling and people are like no no what do, what do you do and he goes that is what i do <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> I fair enough, I'm, yeah. I'm the best-selling author but like if I'm, you know, an engineer, which is one of the things I was in the past, like you don't have to be defined by being an engineer for the rest of your yeah. life. You know, yeah. I think like people focus way too much on what somebody does yeah. and they give too much value on that yeah. as opposed to like what, what they do externally. Yeah. Um, but like on, on the point of like, you know, define yourself and redefine yourself. I think people who discover what they love at an early age are, are very lucky. Mm -hmm. um because you know they're they they know what they want to focus their their time on and they they may never decide to look at anything else uh, i find that like society definitely looks down on people who who don't fit in the box yeah uh, and that like are constantly you know redefining themselves um and like personally like being one of those people i feel like i i i don't feel belong to any one industry or or job yeah. or kind of like character um and it's fun like like it's fun to redefine yourself every once in a while yeah. um and to like look at something different and learn new things because um you know being like a jack of all trades fair enough like you might know a little about a lot but sometimes you know it's it's better than being just a master of one yeah um now obviously it depends what the context is like if you told me tomorrow that I found something that I love and I want to do for, for the rest of my life, amazing. Let me do that and I'll pour my heart into it. But there's no point in beating yourself up for not mm -hmm. finding it in what it is you want to do or what you want to be or what you want to call yourself yeah. forever. Because like, in my opinion, like that's, that's just a societal construct as opposed to a, 
an in, in, innate kind of feeling or uh, or self of identity that 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 we have. Probably a bit more of a, like too philosophical. <laughs> no, no, I like it. No, it's really, really good. It's really, really good because it's really thought thought through as well. So um, you also say play long term games with long term people, and I can't wait to hear what that is about. Well, this is Naval. I can't take any credit for that, but Naval Ravikant often says that he never works with people that don't think longer term and that don't play longer term. Mm-hmm. Like I think it all boils down to to the power of compound interest, and I'm not talking about finances, but like mm-hmm. I'm just talking about like you know, um, little things will will amount to a lot if yes. you do it consistently over a long period of time. Yeah, and if you play long term games with long term people, you will never be in a point at which you're going to be working with somebody or you're going to be doing something that isn't going to provide value to do value mm-hmm. to you in the longer term. Whereas if you're playing, say, short games, like short term games, like you're much more willing to, to, take, to take a shortcut or yeah. to work with somebody that might necessarily meet your your moral kind of standards or le- levels. Um, yeah, exactly. And if if you go in there with that attitude being like, oh, I'll just do it for a while. And like, mm-hmm. you know, if I do it for a while, then like for before you know it, like you're like you you become that yeah. and it's a very dangerous game to play. Whereas yeah. if you're constantly thinking about long-term games at long-term people, like you're always going to make decisions based off like, you know, what's this going to look, look like in five years time or in 10 years time. Um, and it makes you m- a much be- better decision maker. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I like that. I like that. Uh, and also, you also say don't take life too seriously, which I like mm. a lot. And so do you not take life very seriously? <laughs> what do um, you take seriously? I take, do you know what, that like such, such a counterintuitive one because I, if, if if you looked at my CV, you would say, geez, this guy's going to be a dickhead. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this guy's going to be so serious. Like, sorry, I'm not saying I'm not. I might be. But <laughs> you the, know. The, like, the, like, point is, like, I, I, I'm very lucky. I'm quite happy-go-lucky. And I don't really take things with, with too much, um, um, with too much, what's, yeah, I don't take things too seriously. Basically, is like is like the idea, and I definitely got that from from my dad. I remember he came over recently to uh, Edinburgh, and two of us went out for a couple of drinks. And like my dad is kind of like aspirations for me, like really yeah. happy guy, great family, has always managed to balance life very well. Yeah. Not perfect, but like you know, yeah. he's he's as good as a of a person that I would aspire to be. And uh, funnily enough, I I asked him, I was like, "Go on, Dad, tell." tell me the secret and my dad nearly vomited but uh, <laughs> after that he said uh, he was like look just don't take life too seriously and like yeah, at that. the time I kind of was at a point in my life where I was taking life too seriously mm-hmm. like far too seriously um and life is life is just harder yeah <laughs> when yeah, it is. when when you do that now look obviously there are some things now that you do have to take very seriously but like overall, if you act like everything that ever happens to you is for the greater good of the universe, life would be a lot easier for you. Yeah, yeah, I love that. That is really, mm. really, really good. Mm. So we talked earlier about that you've moved into the content creation mm. sphere and um, you've got a YouTube channel and we've got that in common. So tell me what that's like and you, know, you obviously enjoy it and um, is it very different from the businesses? Um, oh, that's a really good question. Mm-hmm. I, I've, I've actually thought about this a lot. It is and it isn't. I think one of the things I love about the content creation side of things is that every video or piece of content you do is literally like starting your own individual business. Yes. Because you have to think of it from inception to, yeah. you know, hypothesis, to proving that hypothesis, to actually executing it and then to delivering it. Like, it's literally yeah. almost like starting a business, on a yeah. much, much smaller scale, obviously. But um, I love that variety in it. I think it's something that I wanted to do for a very, very long time, mm-hmm. um, but never had the time, but I made the excuse that I never had uh, had the time to do it. And um, and yeah, I suppose, like, it's it's definitely one of those things that, that is great for creativity and bringing out your your creative side which which i find extremely fulfilling mm-hmm. um and it's it's um it's a good way to document your life yeah uh, 
where you are uh, at that time. I don't think yeah. you get otherwise. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. What about you? How? how oh, do you so, find it? Um, so the I I always uh, um, um, I I uh, my my daughter's an actress and uh, my niece is a musical theatre actress and um, my father and my sister sung and I I sing a bit so there's always a bit of um, the performance um in us and, mm. and I went into nursing and um you know but you know when people used to ask me well, what would you do if you want me a nurse I said I'll be I'll be a singer in a cocktail bar or something like that so I think for me sort of the the content creation the writing you know even social media posts it is the creative side that I can't draw I do take photographs but I can't draw or do anything arty I do cook that is creative but this is um, the dream for me in if to and I, I, I do this part time as part of my business but you know if I could prob- I'd probably do it full time you know that and mm. what I love is it's accessible and anyone you know anyone can do it if they if they want to and they can just do it for en- enjoyment or they can just do it for fun and my son's got a YouTube channel and he ex- inspired me to do this so um and I just think it's it's amazing. Um, there's a whole world out there, and you know whatever you put on the internet is there forever. And I, I quite like that legacy that that it's 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 still there, and it's sort of it's it it's that different side to the business. Now, my YouTube channel on podcast, you know, it can, it can be used as a marketing tool, but it can also just be used in its own right as well. And yeah. I like I like a bit both, and it it also gets me meeting people, and it's always a conversation starter. So you know. Uh, it yeah. really is it, yeah it re- like it, it's it's always a shock to people when you tell them you have a yeah. like a channel or you do yeah. do things online I find that like with with YouTube let's say specifically YouTube because I, I love video like video video is a format that I love and I'm passionate about there are there are only two things in life that I said that I would do forever even if I wasn't paid for it yes that was football number one yeah and I discovered recently content creation yeah. I love like if I didn't get paid a penny for the rest of my life to do YouTube I would still I would still yeah. do it because I, yeah. I just love it now I'm well aware of the potential for you know earning and like you know mm-hmm. reputation and mm-hmm. influence if you do get to a point but I think if you go in there specifically with those reasons like like anything it's it's going to be hard to to get past the point of like oh dread that 99 percent of people kind of like don't really do and then the one percent might actually get there eventually yeah. um so yeah i agree and i also think um because it's it's again it's it's the thing that you know before I, I used to write a blog and before i went into business i had no idea to monetize it or anything i just did it because i liked it and mm. um and social media the same you know I, you know I, I got quite a good following just just for just for a laugh because I enjoyed it yeah and um and this is an extension of that so and it you know and you know I, I have a long-term plan for this that, and I'll just keep doing it because I like doing it and um mm. and um and it, it doesn't matter if it's a hobby or you know what happens to it I'll do it to my best of my ability so you know hopefully it makes some money but you yeah know, it doesn't it's fine and it's still there and it's still valuable and you know and the and the rewards um, you get from it like I, I got a comment on a, on a video that came out today and said oh I really appreciate your channel I was like I'm so moved oh, you know lovely. so I was just that thinking is, great you know so that and that's the really way nice. you can make a difference mm. you know just by sharing yourself and the things that you're passionate about because other people will be too because you're not no we're not an island and you know we, we do share interests and there's not enough people in the world to do it and what I really like is that you can do that you know no there's no yeah. one to stop you and when I was younger and when God was a boy I was like oh yeah I'm gonna have a channel yeah what you know but you know but now you can just do it yeah and, you know so that's really good yeah yeah really really good yeah so tell me about your book recommendations. I always ask my guests to um, talk about their book recommendations and you've got a few, so tell me. Yeah, I do. Um, I, I just couldn't pick one, <laughs> really. <laughs> I'm like, I say that and I sound, I sound like a reader. I'm not, I am not, I am not a reader. I, my mom tried to force me to read when I am younger. Yeah. I, I read what, what I like yeah. um, and what I like for the time being is primarily kind of like businessy slash like self development kind of books. Um, uh, the three books, where were they again? Oh, Shoe, Shoe Dog by Shoe Dog. Phil Knight. Shoe Dog. It, it's the story of Nike and how Nike was like 
basically you know gone from inception all the way to, to what it is today but it's it, it's written by the founder Phil Knight and he mm-hmm. kept a really detailed diary of everything that happened oh. and it is it like it reads like a novel uh-huh. and the stories in it are just it, it it's the best story of resilience you'll mm-hmm. you'll ever read it's it's incredible uh it is my like my favorite read ever it's it, mm-hmm. it's brilliant um second was a four-hour work week like this is a very commonly rec- recommended book yes um i actually only read it about a year ago mm-hmm. after i started the uh, businesses but you know for its time it was revolutionary yeah. like yeah. Yeah. it was a, a really good like it's one of the few books that actually has real actionables to yes. do I like and that. you actually yeah. like apply things so that was great and the third one was happy by mm-hmm. Darren Brown and um, a long it's a long read it's it's like it's it's quite dense but I don't know if people are familiar with Darren Brown but he's like an illusionist slash mentalist yeah and he's if you haven't seen him check him out he's probably like the, the the coolest yeah uh, performer you'll you'll ever see but he talks like he it, it, it's a good in, introduction to stoicism yeah. and you know like it's very philosophical it's 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 very good he talks a lot about death he talks a lot about uh-huh. um you know like there's no such thing as happiness and happiness is actually you know just like finding something in yourself i'm butchering that but it's a uh, it's a great book if somebody does want to kind of like a more re- reflective read and you know what one of the things that i would say about reading and i'm I, I'm, I'm only after kind of like realizing it recently is that last year i consumed more content than i ever did like be it books or like videos or like what i thought was ed- ed- educational content and i actually did the least i ever came out with and i felt like i was mentally doing all this stuff yeah i did nothing uh no like obviously i did things but like nothing that i wanted to do really yes. necessarily so i actually this year i made myself a point that i'm actually just going to do instead of consume yeah like, that was yeah yeah there is there is that balance isn't there and you know i i love books um because you know, when i grew up that's all there was really but um <laughs> yeah there is um so and I, I admitted to you that i've got lots of books some, and some of the ones that you mentioned that i haven't actually opened them yeah. and you know and um and actually saying that i am more practical i'm sort of like do it and I'm, I use books I like books that are actionable but I actually use them as reference guides rather mm-hmm. than read them through um, mm-hmm. I recently read a novel for just for pleasure and it was great um, yeah uh, but um, you know and, and I think I, d- I don't have the time but I think maybe I see it as work and um, that it's sort of like how's this going to help me in my work so you know but it is important to just do it for the you no know, reading for the sake of it is great if you've got time and you, and you like reading and um, yeah like you can immerse yourself into a story which is really 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 good you really can yeah yeah so at this point, and um, so this is the point where I talk about, because I'm a nurse and the theme is about health and wellness, I ask my guests, how do you stay focused, positive and productive? Um, you seem very focused, positive, productive. And how do you, with all of that, manage your health and well-being? Mm, perception is reality, Don. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm lucky that I've always worked really hard on myself. Yes. Uh, and I don't know why. Um, I don't like when I was 18, first going to college, I never heard of meditation. Yeah. And I started doing Headspace. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yes. a lot of you were first introduced to that at that point. Yeah. But it turned out that like I actually did meditation before that. Yeah. Like not in the same way, obviously, but like, you know, in calming the mind and stuff. And I always found that it was, it would bring you a different sense of, of of being and self-awareness mm-hmm. self-awareness in my opinion is is probably the most important thing somebody could work on in their entire yeah. lives yeah. It, it really is um there's so much there are so many benefits towards understanding yourself and yeah. what makes you tick and what makes what makes you happy that yeah. um that will add so much more value to your life than learning i don't know trig you know i'm like i love maths <laughs> like math is my favorite subject in school but wow like there are some aspects of, you know, life that school doesn't teach you. And like, I think self-awareness is definitely one of them. And yeah. I'm probably going off on a bit of a, 
a bit of a tangent here, but like with regard to like being motivated and being productive, mm -hmm. like that will get you to a point of success. Mm -hmm. But being self-aware, in my opinion, will get you to a point of happiness. Yeah. And like they're they're two completely different things. Um, so like what yourself actually? You, I feel like there's a book in you talking about. That. <laughs> One day <laughs> it's on it's on the bucket list, um, which I'll get to at some at, yeah. at some point. But um, what do I do? Do you know what I what I love doing? I love getting up early uh -huh. and having some time to myself in the morning. Now mm -hmm. I may not have this luxury when we end up having kids, but like mm -hmm. the like the, the whole idea of like waking up having a nice morning routine that generally give like puts me in a good place for the day yeah um I've I've I, I like experimenting with things mm -hmm. Wim Hof method you know intense breathing methods mm -hmm. breath wave um there's there there's a few kind of things there that I've tried like none that I've kind of stuck with yeah all the time like very very few things manage to kind of get that far but I think having experience with trying different methods of basically ways to make you more self-aware, in my opinion, is kind of like what I try and do to take care of myself. And look, I was just saying to you before the call, it doesn't always work. I mean, right now I'm working way more than I should be, uh -huh. uh, way more than I should be. I, I don't like to think of like work as work. Like it's Yeah. And I think that's a good place to be. And I think, you know, when we talk about the creator stuff, you know, that is part that is part of my business, but I don't see it as work. I just really enjoy it. And, you know, when, when I do consultancy, I did some yesterday and I really enjoy it. I really, yeah. I, I really enjoy doing it. And, and I was saying to the person I was working with, it's not, it's, it was lovely. It's great. It's a privilege to be paid to, to do the stuff that <laughs> I, um, that I enjoy doing. And I think that. Yeah. And that is one of the things that joys for me for uh, having my own business is that you you do the things you want to do and the things you enjoy doing and because you enjoy doing them you're really good at them and that's really and that sort of you know that's you know it sort of perpetuates itself really so you you get to do it more so that's really that. really good. I love really. that. There is there is one thing and uh, it was it was actually in one of Ali's uh, videos. Um, he talked about a book called Story Worthy. Uh, um, uh, basically about how to tell good stories and in that the guy the author Matthew Dix talks about this thing called um uh, highlight of the day or homework homework for life that's what oh, he uh, cool. calls it and it's basically where every day you set an alarm for 10 10 o'clock or nine o'clock whatever it is before you go to bed and you document one thing that happened to you in in Ooh. the day and the st and like the whole storyline around it is that you know, you can look back in like future and like come up with stories around it because you're better yeah. at coming up with stories yeah. when you're not in there at the moment. Yeah. But I started doing it with that intention. But what I found is that, and I'm doing it nearly a, like a year now, haven't missed a single day. Life life goes slower when you document what oh, happens to you that. in the day because uh -huh. I I often find like I found when let's say you do like a month and you're like what happened in that yes month? Like, yes like yeah. like, like Jesus, that went so fast but then yeah. you know if I look back at like what's happened to me in that month yes like actually a lot a lot happened in that yes. in that month yeah and then you then life life actually does move that tiny tiny bit slower and that's a nice feeling yeah um so yeah, if anybody has any homework for 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 today, that's definitely one of the things. I love that. I love that. I love that. And there's, yeah. uh, um, I used to have written diaries, um, where you could have the word for the day, and um, also it had, you know, it had it was a very small book, but it had a section for the day. So you, so when, yeah, so when you came to the next year that you'd remember. But I never kept up with them. But that's a really good idea, actually. Um, it is. It is brilliant. if you like writing to um, sort of like document something for a day and because everyone loves a story as well and I think it will help you with um, content creation as well that you know that's amazing really love it that. does it does having a diary I, I was just looking around for it there I don't know do I have it here it's down downstairs I had like I talked about it in one of my first videos but a diary that I had that kind of like you know really? basically I could have had a choice between a hundred grand or that diary and I would have chosen the diary purely just because of the sentimental value of it like it's yeah very very powerful thing to have lovely mm. right this has been amazing a really lovely chat I really liked it how can people get hold of you tell us the name of your YouTube channel and mm. um, how can people sort of know about what you're doing yeah sounds good so probably the easiest way to get in touch with me is through in Instagram my name is just 
So my name is Dara Lucy, but online I'm just Dar Lucy, uh-huh. D-A-R-L-U-C-Y. Okay. Same on YouTube as well. Uh-huh. Um, I thought it'd be just easier. I saw all of these people with the three letter first names and I was like, yeah, do you know what? That's probably That's a moment that will end up, end up uh, working. So um, yeah, Dara Lucy is my name. You can Google me or whatever it is and I, I should come up. So. Brilliant, brilliant. And it's been wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Great to get to know you anyway, but lovely to have you on the show and talk through this. Um, have you got one last thing that you would like to share with the audience, an actionable tip, um, if you like, that they can take away with them? Um, I don't think like to seriously. I'll leave yeah. it there. <laughs> I love yeah. that. I think that's true. Yeah. I think that's true. I think that's true because whatever whatever happens, um, I saw somebody on the podcast about this. You know, whatever happens, something could always be worse or better, and there's always a mm-hmm. continuum wherever you are. That you know, things could be a hundred times worse or a hundred times better. So you know that one, yeah, one hundred percent. Actually, sorry, another thing came came to my head that kind of takes around that. But I heard it on a TikTok, believe it or not, if anything, and it really stuck. And I think I said it already. It's that if you treat everything that happens to you in life with the impression that it's for the greater good of the universe yes you really do start to look at things completely differently yes that like and it's very comforting to know that there's something bigger new whether yeah. there is or there isn't like it doesn't matter yeah. once you believe it and um, yeah. like there's a there's a lot of comfort in that so sorry i won't say anymore That's fine. Absolutely fine. Thank you so much, Dara. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. And that's it for the Dawn Jarvis show today. It's been a really good one today, as it always is. If you like what you've heard, um, please like, share, subscribe and and comment as well. It'd be really great to know what you think um, about what we've been talking about today. And I will see you soon. Take care and bye bye. 